I take that as a compliment. War with Germany will come. And we will need a king whom we can all stand behind. He's afraid of his own shadow. The nation believes that when I, I speak, I speak for them. But I can't speak. You could do it. You needn't be governed by fear. It'll be like mad King George the Stammer. Get up! You can't sit there! Get up! Why not? It's a chair. That is... That is St. Edward's chair! People have that... carved their names Listen to me! Listen to me! Why should I waste my time listening to you? Because I have a voice! Yes, you do. Your greatest test is yet to come. I get out of my... What's he say? I don't know, but he seems to be saying it rather well. Your first wartime speech. Broadcast to the nation and the world. This great time of crisis. However this turns out, I don't know how to thank you. Bertie, you're the bravest man I know. I intend to be a very good queen. To a very great king. Forget everything else and just say it to me. To say the King's Speech is a good movie would be like saying Tatooine is merely a lukewarm planet. I can safely say that I have not seen a movie in theaters that moved me the way the King's Speech did since December 28, 2003. The King's Speech does everything right. The acting in the film is superb. The lead actors take the audience on a roller coaster ride of emotions, from the pure elation of sharing in the King's successes to the depths of sadness and discomfort as you watch Albert stutter his way through even the most simple of sentences. This is thanks not only to the acting, but to the script, which won Best Screenplay at this year's Oscars. The writers crafted every word of the script to be meaningful, and you will laugh your way through the movie as Firth and Rush exchange fast-paced banter with each other. The cinematography in the movie was second to none. It managed to take even cliched shots and make them seem fresh and original. The whole thing is bursting with style. Everything in the film sucks you in, and by the end of it, you feel like Colin Firth is your son getting up on stage for his middle school play. You've seen how hard he's worked, and you know the obstacles and tribulations he has overcome, and you hope to God that it ends up all right in the end. This is the best film I've seen in the past five years, bar none. If you have not seen it, drop what you are doing and go, after the show ends, of course. By winning Best Picture this year, The King's Speech is supposed to represent the absolute pinnacle of filmmaking in the past year. It's safe to say The King's Speech delivers on that, and then some. We'll be right back with WMCM, with Tyrol Lubker, with the weather, in just a moment. There is no more beautiful image in the galaxy than that of a nebula. Ever since the Hubble Space Telescope actually started working in 1990, we as a planet have been granted front row seats to the most incredible show in the universe. But what is a nebula? The most general definition of the term is a cloud of interstellar gas and dust. But it turns out that there are several different types. Emission nebula actually emit colored light. These nebula are neat because they are often birthing grounds for new stars. The opposite of an emission nebula is a planetary nebula. Here, stars are in the process of dying and are losing layer after layer of gas to the interstellar winds. Even more dramatic are supernova remnants. These are stars that didn't wait to die. They blew up. A nuclear reaction to the core of the star causes the whole thing to implode on itself. The gases get superheated and explode outward to create these stunning displays. Perhaps the most striking nebula are dark nebulas. Dark nebula are clouds of dust and rock and interstellar junk that block the light behind them. The heavens are filled with entrancing images like these. We've only begun to scratch the surface of what else is out there amongst the stars. All right, let's take a look at this weekend's weather. Uh, Thursday, it was mostly cloudy, high of 51, low of 36, not too bad. Friday, kind of a buzzkill, we got some showers potential, but high of 46, 34, it's always better than snow. On Saturday, we have a partly cloudy sky with a high of 51 and a low of 38, and on Sunday, lonely Sunday, there's gonna be showers, so you might as well just do homework anyways, with a high of 43 and a low of 38. And now, here's Debbie Haggerty with this weekend's interview. Hi, I'm Debbie with my friend Armas here, who is currently the College Democrat co-chair. And he's here to talk about the College Democrat 
club on campus. So what exactly are College Dems, the well, organization? The College Dems essentially are the organization for the Democratic Party here at UWL. Uh, we are a student org, so uh, we are associated with UWL in that sense. Okay. So what exactly do you do within the club? Um, essentially, we basically hold weekly meetings. We focus on basically informing our membership and the rest of the student body on both politics in general and specifically democratic politics. Um, basically introducing uh, candidates to the student body, uh, things such as that. Cool. So, what are, have been your recent events with all the stuff going on in politics right now? Well, w given uh, the current policies of Governor Walker and just everything that's going on, uh, regardless of what side of the aisle people are on, we've held several rallies uh, to kind of bring students together on specific issues like SB6, which is a student um, for ID bill, uh, which will greatly affect students. Um, and so we've had these rallies around that to like uh, turnouts of over a thousand people. So that's been really cool. Very cool. Yeah. So before all this stuff went on, all the rallies going on, what did you do within the elections last fall, working uh, with those? Essentially what we do is we aim to both turn out the student body uh, vote and we were fairly successful last time. I know in 2008 that was really successful. We actually had the highest turnout in the state and one of the highest turnouts in the nation at UWL. So that's something we're pretty proud of. Um, otherwise, we work directly with the campaigns and college Democrats directly work with the candidates and with their campaigns. Um, so in that sense, it's a really good tool uh, to allow students to become part of the government and get actively involved. So how do you go about pulling students into the vote, getting them out to vote? Uh, essentially, we run dorm storms where we knock on your door and we're the people that bug you and tell you to go vote. So, cool. Yeah. Cool. And sidewalk talking and all that fun stuff. Yep. All right, well, t um, so you, yourself, and another member of College Gems recently ran for city council. How do you think that the College Gems as a whole prepared you for that experience? I know my own experience, in it, as well as Justin's. Uh, he was the past chair, I'm the current chair. Um, there's a lot of opportunities through the College Democrats to essentially see how other candidates, including uh, Jen or otherwise um, Ron Kine, you know, candidates such as these, run their campaigns. And working directly with them, you're able to learn how they're, they're successful. Um, and I think that in itself is a really big skill or, or a useful thing. Um, but besides that, you also have the opportunity um, through the college Dems to gain the, the skills that are requisite to run for your office in the sense that actually when you're talking about knocking on doors, that's really huge. I mean, I've knocked in the past few years on, on thousands of doors, tens of thousands of doors. And so now for me um, to go to somebody's door and ask them to vote for me, mm -hmm. it wasn't that hard after doing it for people that weren't me. Right. Um, so in that sense, it really prepares you for, uh, for public office. And so when there's not a whole lot going on, what do you do when there's not politics or events? Do you go to conferences, different events with other college Dems, there's chapters? A, yeah, there's a networking aspect as long as a social aspect. Uh, we hold caucuses, which are exciting to say the least. <laughs> um, and essentially that's where we network with other schools, um, you know, have a good time. If you're of age, we uh, consume enjoyable beverages and it's a good time. Uh, otherwise, um, we also hold a convention every year, uh, CDW. Uh, essentially what that is, is it's an opportunity to meet and have some face time with the various candidates or elected officials. Um, in fact, we did have uh, Joanne Kloppenberg at the last one. Unfortunately, Ron Kind couldn't make it. Um, but, you know, we have that, that personal connection, I guess you could say, to those politicians. And, th and that's really cool. It's a great opportunity while you're in college. Cool. So what can we expect from the college Democrats coming up within the next few months? Uh, essentially more rallies and really a huge uh, vote uh, turnout effort. We had, did really well this time in this um, past election just uh, a few days ago here on Tuesday. Um, and maybe we, as we saw, uh, in any election can come down to 200 votes. And I mean, right now, more than ever, that student vote is so important mm -hmm. with the kind of things we're facing. Um, there are certain issues out there. And, and again, regardless of what side of the, the aisle someone sits on, it's really important we vote and exercise that right so that regardless of what happens, if it comes down to that one or two votes, or in this case 204 votes, uh, we can actually have the right to ex also exercise our freedom of speech because we already exercised our right to vote. So. Very cool. So to close, what's the best thing about being a college dem? I think just the opportunities. I mean, it's it. really, uh, it's personally for me been something that's really, I think, helped develop me. Um, and allowed me like new opportunities. Um, personally, I want to go to law school, and I think this is definitely going to help. So get your foot in the door. Yeah. Okay. So when are uh, when are meetings? Uh, they're at seven o'clock uh, every Thursday. So actually tonight. So you could stop by uh, three forty Cartwright and go to the College Dems. Very cool. 
All right, well, stay tuned. Stephanie Olson will be back with this week's sports. But first, let's take a look at those adorable animals again looking for loving homes on this week's per Perfect Pets. Bert is a young little babe looking for a home to help him become a great dog. With time to adjust and the proper introductions, he should do well in a home with both cats, dogs, and children. Vinny is ready for the nice weather and hoping you are too. He is active, eager to please, and silly. He would do best in a home with children 12 years and older. Topaz is a very soft and sweet girl. She loves to play and have lots of fun. She has a wonderful personality and will be a great addition to any home. Cowboy is a very handsome gentleman. He loves attention and would also love to find a lap to keep warm. He has a big personality and needs a home with lots of love. To find out more about adoption for these pets or others, contact the Cooley Region Humane Society at 781-4014. Again, the phone number for the Cooley Region Humane Society is 781-4014. The Eagles baseball team earned a doubleheader split against UW Stout last Sunday. The first game started off slow until the Blue Devils took the lead in the top of the fourth by scoring five runs and then added another in the sixth. The Eagles answered back with their first run of the game when Travis Martin's fielder's choice scored in Zach Harrison. In the eighth inning, both teams scored three runs. Cole Sifalu started off the inning with a solo shot. Harrison and Brett Jacobson added one RBI single apiece. Corey Geary finished the game 3 for 4 with a run scored in. Jay Fanta, Harrison, and Jacobson each contributed by having two hits. The final score read Lacrosse 4, Stout 10. The second game looked like a different story for the Eagles. UWL took an early lead in the bottom of the first when Cifalu scored on Fanta's sacrifice fly. UW Stout tied the game in the top of the third, but not for long. The Eagles scored again in the bottom of the third, and, but blew it open in the fifth. With two outs, the Eagles scored eight runs to go up 11-2. The inning was highlighted by the first two run singles from Adam Cordova and Fanta. Siflu and Trocky each had RBI singles. Johnson topped off UWL's scoring streak by slamming a three-run homer in the sixth. Fanta was three for, three for three and combined with nine RBIs with Trocky and Johnson. The winning pitcher was Tim Verthine, who went seven innings, allowing seven hits and fanning four. The Eagles' next game is this Saturday when they travel to UW Oshkosh. Transferring from the field to the gym where UWL gymnastics freshman sensation Krista Booman competed last Saturday in the all-around competition at the NCAA Division I North Central Regional in Denver. Booman finished with a score of 38.50 and placed 10th out of 16 competitors. University of Florida's Elena Johnson captured the all-around title with a score of 39.525. On the bars and the beam, Booman tied for 32nd. She placed 35th on the floor and 30, 41st on the vault. Booman also earned five NCGA First Team All-American honors on March 25th and 26th at UW-Eau Claire. Booman captured the national title in the all-around, becoming the fourth gymnast in school history to do so. Congratulations on Booman's success, and we are looking forward to watching her in years to come. As this winter sports season concludes, UWL is in 29th place for the, for the Division III Learfield Sports Directors Cup. Williams College in Massachusetts is in first place with, with 719.5 point points, while the Eagles have only 277.5 points. As for the WEAC schools, UW-Stevens Point leads while in sixth place. UW Oshkosh is in 8th, Whitewater is in 14th, UW Eau Claire is in 23rd, and UW Platteville is in 36th place. These standings include basketball, fencing, ice hockey, skiing, swimming, indoor track and field, and wrestling this winter. UWL's wrestling team was awarded 85 points for finishing 3rd at the NCAA Division III Championships. Another 85 points went towards men's track and field for placing 3rd at the Indoor Championships, 44 and a half points for the women's swimming and diving team with their 29th place finish at the national championship. 38 points for the women's track and field team for tying 34th at the indoor national meet and 25 points for the women's basketball team. Even though the UWL gymnastics team captured the 211 NCGA title, no points were rewarded to them because points are only rewarded to NCAA sponsored championships. Last year, lacrosse finished seventh in the standings. UWL is one of six intuitions 
in NCAA D3 history to finish in the top 20 all 15 years. And that's all for this week's sports. Thanks, Stephanie. And thanks for watching WMCM's Week in Review. Make sure to join.